Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the SummerSlam review. SummerSlam last night was from Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. SummerSlam last night was a piece of shit show. It was absolutely fucking terrible. Just god awful. The show didn't even feel like SummerSlam. This show felt more like a super show with Mighty Night Raw superstars and SmackDown superstars. It just felt like a super show. It didn't even feel like SummerSlam. Just a god-awful show it was last night. But there was some good stuff that happened. But outside of that, everything else on the card was fucking awful. And we had two returns last night, which I will get to. So I'm going to start with the match that was on the kickoff show, the pre-show, which I didn't see, but it was Big E versus Baron Corbin. It must have been a shit match, but Big E ended up winning. Uh, from what I read, Big E ended up uh, retrieving the Money in the Bank briefcase. He got the briefcase back. So thank God. But like I said, it must have been a shit match. Now I'm going to start with the, uh, the regular matches that were on the, uh, the SummerSlam card. So SummerSlam kicked off with the Raw Tag Team titles on the line. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, RK Bro, versus AJ Styles and Omos. And this was a pretty uh, decent match here. And the match started off with Orton and Styles. Orton delivered a suplex to Styles. He was stomping away on Styles. Orton kept control of the match as Styles ended up rolling out to the floor. Styles was punching the announce table because he was frustrated. So Riddle and Omos end up getting in. Omos then end up decking Matt Riddle. And Omos went, went to uh, you know punch on Matt Riddle. Omos then scooped Riddle up and launched him across the ring. And Omos was then taunting Orton. So... Omos kept control of the match, and Styles ended up coming back in, and he ended up uh, hitting a Tornado DDT to Matt Riddle, went for the cover, which Riddle ended up kicking out too. So, Styles was taunting at uh, Randy Orton. Styles then ended up grounding Matt Riddle in the middle of the ring. So, Riddle ended up uh, getting free because Styles ended up uh, locking him in a forearm, so Riddle ended up getting free, end up uh, decking Omos on the apron. Riddle then dumped Styles out to the floor over the top rope. Riddle then ended up crawling for Orton, but Styles ended up running back in, stopped uh, Riddle from getting the tag to Orton. So at the end of the match, Orton ended up dodging a phenomenal forearm uh, from Styles. Styles ended up blocking the RKO. And Orin then ended up dropping Styles. He went for the RKO again. He got Styles and dropped him with the RKO. So Orin ended up uh, pinning Styles. And there you go. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle win the match and are your new Raw Tag Team Champions. Which was the right thing to do. Post-match, we had Orin and Matt Riddle posing in the corner. And... Orton was smiling as him and Matt Riddle uh, posed together in the middle of the ring with the titles. So that was that. But overall, decent match. And that was the right thing uh, for WWE to, to do to give uh, Randy Orton and Matt Riddle uh, the titles. I mean, Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, they're the best thing going on Monday Night Raw. I can say for everything else on the show. Everything else on Monday Night Raw is fucking terrible. Randy Orton and Matt Riddle are the only ones that stand out on Monday Night Raw. So then we had Eva Marie versus Alexa Bliss, which I didn't watch this match. I could have gave a shit. Eva Marie on the SummerSlam card. Why? Eva Marie's on the SummerSlam card, but yet Finn Balor didn't have a SummerSlam match. Kevin Owens, no SummerSlam match. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart. Tegan Knox, no SummerSlam match. Tony Storm, no SummerSlam match. Where the fuck is Tony Storm? She hasn't even been on TV in a month. 
Yet all those didn't have SummerSlam match. Didn't have a SummerSlam match. But even Marie has. Give me a fucking break. Alexa Bliss end up winning the match. Who cares? Could have gave a shit. Even Marie is fucking awful in the ring. She can't fucking wrestle. Moving on. So then we went backstage. And we had Mario Lopez. Yes, Mario Lopez. Slater from Saved by the Bell. He ended up interviewing Matt Riddle and Randy Orton. So Orton ended up saying to Mario Lopez that he meant what he said when he said, RK bro are back. He ended up saying that it would be smooth sailing from here because they will use the three most destructive letters in sports entertainment. R, K, and then he thinks about it for a second. And he's like, bro. So, Randy Orton ended up walking off. And Matt Riddle ended up telling Mario Lopez that he has a surprise for Orton on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. So, that was that. Now we had Damian Priest versus Sheamus for the United States Championship. This was the best match of the first hour of this awful show. So we had Damian Priest end up coming out. And then out came Sheamus. Sheamus was still wearing his face protective mask. So the match ended up starting. Both Damian Priest and Sheamus end up locking up. Both of them were tangling into the corner and into the ropes. Sheamus then took Damian Priest down. Started grounding on Priest. Priest ended up fighting back up. But Sheamus ended up taking him back down. So Sheamus ended up taking Priest back down into a hold. Sheamus then dropped Priest with a shoulder, and they end up both running the ropes. Priest ended up leveling Sheamus with a kick, and Sheamus delivered a open hand strike to Priest and started delivering some more shots. Priest then came back and decked Sheamus with the right hand, and he leapt into the corner and delivered a splash. Priest then went and delivered a suplex to Sheamus. Went for the cover, which Sheamus kicked out too. Priest ended up dumping Sheamus to the apron. They started trading shots. Priest then kicked Sheamus out to the floor. And Priest ended up running the ropes. And he leapt over the top rope. He took Sheamus down with a kick. Which, uh, that was a pretty cool uh, spot there. So Priest ended up mounting a bunch of strikes. At ringside as the referee was counting for them to get back into the ring. But Sheamus then ended up catching Priest in midair. He slammed Priest into the ring post. Sheamus then brought Priest back into the ring. Started working him over. Sheamus then delivered a belly back suplex. But Damian Priest was hanging on. Sheamus ended up grounding Priest with the headlock. So Priest ended up trying to uh, get back up. Sheamus ended up rocking him and hit a backbreaker, which he holded uh, Damian Priest over his knee. Sheamus then kept uh, Damian Priest down, and he was showing off. Sheamus then grounded Damian Priest again. He was talking trash to him. Priest then ended up fighting back, but Sheamus ended up uh, hitting him. Priest countered and delivered a hurricanrana to Sheamus. Sheamus came back and kept control. Of the match, he ended up dropping Damian Priest for a pin, and Priest ended up kicking out a two. So Sheamus then ended up taking Damian Priest to the apron. He went for the 10 beats of Buran, but Priest ended up resisting. Sheamus then ended up hitting uh, the 10 beats anyway to Damian Priest. So we had Sheamus end up doing the double smile to Damian Priest. Later on, Sheamus ended up blocking the Reckoning uh, that was done by Damian Priest, and he delivered a Fireman's Carry roll. Sheamus had the heel hook locked in on Damian Priest, and Damian Priest was trying to reach for the bottom rope, but he wasn't close to it. Damian Priest ended up sitting up in the heel hook, and he ended up taking off Sheamus's mask. So Priest started unloading some strikes, uh, to Sheamus to get out of the hold. 
And Priest ended up dropping Sheamus face first into the top turnbuckle, level him with a heel kick. And then Damien Priest then delivered the broken arrow on Sheamus. And he went for the cover. And there you go. Damien Priest ended up winning the match and is your new United States champion. So post match, Damien Priest ended up uh, celebrating with the United States championship as he made his way out of the ring. He raised the title in the air. And. That was that. But overall, this was the best match of the first hour. It was really enjoyable match here. And Damian Priest, as the, as the new United States champion, he deserves the title. I mean, Sheamus did nothing with the United States championship. So then we saw Ray and Dominic backstage. Dominic ended up apologizing for his father's loss on SmackDown on Friday. So Ray was like, oh, let's just focus on uh, getting back the SmackDown tag team titles. So that was that. And then we had the match. Ray and Dominic Mysterio versus the Usos. SmackDown tag team titles on the line. I'm like, how many times have we seen this? I mean... It was a okay match here, but at the same time, how many times have we seen this? So Ray and Dominic end up coming out first, and then the Usos then came out. Ray and Jimmy end up starting the match off. Ray was looking to go for an early 619 attempt, but he couldn't get it. Dominic ended up sending Jay out to the floor. Ray delivered a baseball slide to take down the Usos at ringside. Dominic then springboard to take both uh, the Usos down. Dominic ended up uh, coming in, and he ended up flying off the top rope to take Jimmy down. Went for the cover, which Jimmy ended up kicking out too. So Dominic then paid homage to the late great Eddie Guerrero with the uh, three amigos. So Jay then ended up tagging in, and Dominic... Didn't see the tag, so Dominic ended up going to the top. Jay ended up shoving Dominic to the floor. And then Jay ended up shoving Dominic into the ring post. Started talking some trash to him. So Jay then kept control of the match. He ended up headbutting Dominic. And he went for the code, which Dominic kicked out at two. So Jimmy ended up doing a cheap shot uh, to Dominic while the referee was distracted. So Dominic ended up fighting both of the Usos from the corner. He ended up getting uh, leveled by an uppercut from Jay. Jay then came back and delivered a snap suplex to Dominic. So at the end of the match, Jimmy ended up super kicking Ray. And Jay ended up coming off of the tag. And both Jimmy and Jay ended up delivering double super kicks to Ray. Jay went back to the top and delivered a splash to Ray. And he went for the cover. And there you go. The Usos end up winning the match, retaining the SmackDown Tag Team titles. The overall, okay match. But how many times have we seen uh, this? these guys go at it? Post-match, we had the Usos stand tall in the ring. Dominic then came in to check on his father. The Usos were taunting uh, the Mysterios. So we had Ray and Dominic end up exiting the ring. And the referee was checking on Ray at ringside. And that was that. And then we had another celebrity uh, interview. Uh, Tiffany Haddish was backstage. I like Tiffany Haddish. I think she's very funny. So she was backstage, and she was interviewing Damian Priest, who just won the United States Championship from Sheamus. So Damian Priest ended up telling Tiffany Haddish about how Sheamus is a bully, and that it was great taking the United States Championship from a bully. So Priest ended up going on about him being from New York. Of course, Damian Priest, New York guy here. And he ended up saying how his title win proves 
that this is the land of opportunity, no matter what the haters say. So that was what Damian Priest had to say. Well, really glad that he's the, the new United States champion. It was the right decision. So then we had Rick Boogs. He ended up coming out with his guitar. He ended up saying, this musical interlude is so that the WWE Universe can party with the one true king of WWE. So Boogs ended up introducing Nakamura, King Shinsuke Nakamura, the Intercontinental Champion. He came out to a big pop, and of course he had Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee sounded like he had a gasm on commentary, which uh, was funny. So Pat McAfee, of course, he was dancing on top of the announce table, and the crowd, of course, popping for Nakamura. And even Nakamura didn't have a SummerSlam match. But yet, even Marie had one. And then Bianca Belair ended up coming out. Bianca Belair, she started swinging her hair around. She danced to the ring. And this was supposed to be Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Greg Hamilton ended up announcing that Sasha is not medically cleared to compete. So, because of that, the WWE end up falsely advertising Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair. Of course, they had the contract sign in, and Sasha was not even not even here last night. One of the reasons I think why they say Sasha is not medically cleared is my prediction is I think Sasha tested positive for COVID. I think that's why she wasn't on SummerSlam last night. So that's my prediction. I think Sasha tested positive for COVID. So he ended up saying that Bianca will defend the SmackDown Women's Championship against the most beautiful woman in all of WWE, Carmella. So Carmella then came out. Bianca looked all confused. Carmella then made her way to the ring. And Bianca was seething as Carmella ended up doing uh, her entrance. So Bianca then got on the mic. And she ended up saying, it may not be tonight. But sooner than later, it will be her and Sasha. But until then, she's just going to take her frustrations out on Carmella. And beat her dusty little self. So both uh, Bianca and Carmella were arguing. And then the bell ended up ringing. And then we had the return of Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch ended up returning last night. And the crowd ended up popping for Becky Lynch. Gave her a big pop. It was awesome to see Becky Lynch return. and. You know, she looked good after coming off of her having a baby. So Becky Lynch was all fired up. And Bianca was hyped up as well. Becky Lynch ended up heading to the ring. And I liked Becky's shirt uh, that she was wearing. It said, uh, the man's back in Vegas. So Becky was in the ring. She ended up looking at both Carmella and Bianca Belair. Becky then kicked Carmella and threw her out of the ring. And Becky ended up telling Bianca she'll be right back. So Becky ended up going out to, going out of the ring. She ended up sending Carmella into the ring steps. So Becky then came back in. She ended up facing off with Bianca. And the fans ended up popping. So we had a stare down between Bianca and Becky Lynch. So Becky got on the mic and she ended up uh, proposing that she and Bianca blow the roof off of Allegiant Stadium for the SmackDown Women's Championship. So Bianca Belair ended up tearing Becky down and the match ended up getting on the way, which this is where her return uh, was 
awful uh, right here with Becky Lynch. So the bell ended up ringing. Becky Lynch offered her hand for Bianca to shake, but instead she ended up decking Bianca in the jaw and dropped her with the pump handle slam. And so Becky went for the cover, and there you go. Becky Lynch end up winning, and Becky is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. Awful. Absolutely awful. You have Becky Lynch come back, and WWE just gives her the SmackDown Women's Championship. What did Becky Lynch do to earn an opportunity for the SmackDown Women's Championship? Absolutely nothing. And I like Becky Lynch. I think she is a sweetheart, and she ha she's, great, she's great in the ring, but WWE having her come back and just reward her, the SmackDown Women's Championship, just like that, and, she, and they buried Bianca Belair here. How awful. You build Bianca up and get her over just to have Becky Lynch come back and just bury her just like that. They did Bianca dirty last night. Awful. Absolutely awful. Post-match, Becky ended up taking the SmackDown Women's Championship. She ended up yelling that she's back. Bianca ended up sitting up in the corner. She wasn't happy. So Becky Lynch ended up celebrating she ended up posing with the title in the air. And that was basically that. But feel bad for Bianca. And then we had Mike Rome. He ended up introducing uh, Olympic gold medal uh, wrestlers, Gable Stevenson and Tamara Mensa Stock. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. But Gable Stevenson, there's been talks that WWE wants to sign him. We'll see how that goes. So it was just that. Jinder Mahal versus Drew McIntyre was the next match, which this was fucking awful. This was absolutely boring. Of course, Fear and Shanky are banned from were banned from ringside for the match. And Jinder Mahal was the one who came out first, and then Drew McIntyre. Of course, Drew McIntyre carrying his sword, Angela. So, the bell ended up ringing. McIntyre ended up ramming Jinder back into the corner, delivered a chop to uh, Jinder. McIntyre delivered a clothesline. He had some more offense on Jinder. So McIntyre was calling for a Claymore, but Jinder ended up rolling out to the floor to avoid being hit by the Claymore. So McIntyre ended up following him, but Jinder ended up decking uh, McIntyre on the apron. And McIntyre ended up blocking a shot into the ring steps. He ended up launching Jinder overhead on the floor. Jinder was then begging on his knees in the ring, saying they used to be like brothers, and McIntyre doesn't have to do this. So McIntyre ended up blocking the cheap shot, but Jinder ended up leveling him with a big kick to uh, his face, to McIntyre's face. Went for the code, which McIntyre ended up kicking out too. So at the end of the match, McIntyre ended up delivering the Claymore on Jinder, went for the cover, and there you go. Drew McIntyre. Ended up winning the match. Post match, Veer and Shanky end up coming down to check on Jinder. They end up staring McIntyre down. And McIntyre end up grabbing uh, Angela the sword. And he sent uh, them retreating out of the ring. And that was that. Overall, god awful match. Absolutely boring. Then we have Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley versus Nikki A.S.H. This was a triple threat match for the World Women's Championship. Awful match. We had Nikki end up coming out first, came out to a pop, and then Rhea Ripley came out, and then overrated Queen Charlotte made her uh, entrance after that. Of course, she had to have Pyro. So they all end up facing off. Charlotte ended up shoving Nikki down to the mat. Nikki ended up dumping Rhea Ripley out to the floor. Nikki mounted uh, Charlotte in the corner and delivered a flip. Rhea Ripley ended up coming back in. She ended up going for Nikki, but Nikki ended up rolling uh, Rhea Ripley up for a two count. Charlotte ended up attacking uh, Nikki and sent her to the floor. 
So Charlotte and Rhea Ripley were going at it uh, at this point in the match. So Rhea Ripley delivers some shoulder thrusts in the corner to Charlotte. So Rhea Ripley then ended up sending Charlotte to the apron. Nikki ended up running back in. She ended up using uh, Rhea Ripley to kick Charlotte off of the apron. So then Rhea Ripley and Nikki went at it. Charlotte ended up running right back into the ring. And she ended up leveling Nikki and then attacked Rhea Ripley. So we had later on Charlotte do her awful moonsault on the outside. Which, you know, Charlotte, every time she hits that uh, moonsault, it just becomes worse and worse and worse every time she does it. So at the end of the match, we had Charlotte end up applying the figure four to Nikki. And Charlotte ended up bridging it into the figure eight. Nikki ended up uh, trying to reach the ropes. She ended up screaming out. Nikki ended up tapping. And there you go. Charlotte ended up winning the match. And now Charlotte is your new Royal Women's Champion. Who cares? Fuck Charlotte Flair. So post-match, Charlotte ended up taking uh, the title. And she ended up sitting up on, on her knees. Rhea Ripley ended up sitting against the barricade at ringside. Nikki ended up clutching her knee while she was still down on the mat. So Charlotte then ended up raising the title in the air. And that was that. But WWE, once again, they got to give Charlotte and hand her the, a title. It is absolutely disgusting how just WWE just gives Charlotte everything. Title shot after title shot after title shot after title shot. So Rollins was ready to hit the stomp. He was waiting in the corner for Edge to get back up. Edge then turned over. He ended up catching the stomp. He shoved Rollins down to the mat. And Edge then applied the educator, which it's been a while since Edge uh, did that. So Rollins ended up crawling for the bottom rope. Edge ended up tightening the hold. He then pulled Rollins back to the middle of the ring. Rollins then rolled Edge up for a two count. Edge ended up going right into the cross face. Edge turned Rollins back over into the middle of the ring. He ended up tightening the cross face. Rollins ended up breaking it. And Edge starts slamming Rollins' face into the mat. Edge then quickly applied the cross face again while they were still on the mat. And Rollins ended up tapping out. And there you go. Edge ended up winning the match. And post-match... Edge ended up standing tall, and he was looking down at Rollins. Edge ended up raising his arms in victory, and he celebrated, and that was how uh, that was how the match ended. But overall, awesome match. This was the best match of the night. In my opinion, this is match of the year candidate for me. Just this match was so good. It was very good. And then it was announced that next year, Money in the Bank is going to be at Allegiant Stadium. It was announced for the 4th of July weekend. So there you go. It's going to be uh, Money in the Bank next year at Allegiant Stadium. They're coming back to Vegas. And then we went to Mike Rome. He was in the ring. And he announced the attendance for SummerSlam. And he said that there are 51,000 326 fans in attendance for SummerSlam. I find that bullshit. You know, WWE goes on and they make up this attendance saying that, oh, these fans are, you know, all in attendance here. But it's probably going to be, it's probably that low. It's pro there was probably not 51,000 in there as WWE was claiming uh, it to be there with uh, those fans there. Trust me, it wasn't 51,000. Oh, God. And then we had the Miz and Morrison. Oh, my God. This whole this segment was awful, as I'm going to describe it. So, the Miz and Morrison were in the ring. And they go on about how Desert Heat and how they're here to cool off everyone. And in the pre-show, they end up arriving with a water truck. And they promised a surprise 
for later on in the pay-per-view. So The Miz was ready to bring out the Dripstick 2000 to wet everyone up. So Xavier Woods ended up coming out through the crowd because The Miz and Morrison were confused over who was supposed to bring out the Dripstick 2000. So Xavier Woods ended up coming out and he's wearing a water tank on his back. And it's attached to a large water gun. And that was a Dripstick 2000. So Xavier Woods ended up saying they left the Dripstick 2000 in their unattended truck. And he took it out. So Morrison was like, oh, I want the gun so that we could take care of everyone's dryness. Xavier Woods ended up saying that the only dry ones in the stadium are the Miz and John Morrison. So Miz ended up threatening Xavier Woods and says there's only one of him and two of them. So he was like, give me the Dripstick 2000. So Xavier Woods ended up paying tribute to uh, WWE Hall of Famer Scott Hall, and he was doing the A-O, which he was looking like Scott Hall here. He was asking uh, the fans if they want him to give the gun over to The Miz and John Morrison, or wet them with it. So Miz was warning Xavier Woods not to use the Dripstick 2000 on him and Morrison, but Xavier Woods ended up spraying Miz and Morrison with the Dripstick 2000. They were soaked, and they retreated out of the ring, and that was basically that. But overall, this segment was fucking terrible. Awful. And then we went to Goldberg. Goldberg. Bill Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship. Why this match needed to take place? This match did not need to happen. Who asked for Goldberg versus Bobby Lashley? So Bobby Lashley ended up coming out along with MVP. Lashley ended up uh, marching to the ring, posting the corner. Pyro was going off. And then out came Goldberg. Goldberg made his way out. Of course, the camera ended up cutting backstage. Security knocking on Goldberg's uh, door. He ended up coming out, making his way through the backstage area. He walked through the smoke. And he was staring at the ring with Bobby Lashley in there. So the match itself was fucking awful. The bell ended up ringing. Goldberg and Lashley ended up staring each other down. They end up locking up. They tangled into the ropes and then into the corner. Goldberg ended up backing off of Bobby Lashley. Lashley then shoved Goldberg. And then they and then he he ran into him with a shoulder. But Goldberg didn't budge. Goldberg ended up taking Bobby Lashley down with a flying shoulder. Goldberg then catched Bobby Lashley with a body slam and a power slam in the middle of the ring. Goldberg then sent Lashley into the corner, started clotheslining him. So then we had Goldberg end up, end up leveling Lashley in the middle of the ring with a clothesline. And the referee was checking on Bobby Lashley. Lashley ended up fighting him back with some right hands, beating Goldberg down to one knee. Lashley ended up looking to use the jackhammer, but Goldberg ended up preventing that. Lashley then slammed Goldberg, started pounding on him. Lashley then went to the top. Goldberg then caught Bobby Lashley. Slammed him into the mat. Goldberg was waiting in the corner as Lashley ended up recovering. Lashley ended up getting up, but MVP ended up pulling him out to the floor to avoid Goldberg hitting the spear. Goldberg then ran around the ring. He hit the spear to Bobby Lashley at ringside, put him down on the floor. Goldberg then ended up putting Bobby Lashley back into the ring. Goldberg was ready to hit another spear, but MVP ended up hitting him with a cane in the back of his knee. Lashley then took advantage and started taking Goldberg's leg out with a chop block. So Goldberg ended up slowly getting back up. Bobby Lashley then choked, slammed Goldberg in the middle of the ring, driving him down to the mat. So Lashley then was just stalking Goldberg as he slowly got up. Lashley then ended up going for the hurt lock. Goldberg ended up resisting it. Goldberg then elbowed Bobby Lashley away. 
Goldberg then got dropped, and he landed, he landed the bat on his head there. Goldberg then rolled out to the floor to take a breather. So Lashley ended up going out. He ended up scooping Goldberg and ran him into the ring post. And Goldberg ended up hitting hard into uh, the post. And we had Lashley end up stopping the count because the referee was counting. Lashley ended up getting into the ring and got back out. He ran Goldberg headfirst into the ring post again. So Lashley ended up bringing Goldberg back into the ring. Goldberg ended up going down, started clutching his knee as the referee ended up checking on him. So Goldberg slowly got back up to his feet, but he ended up going back down. So the referee ended up calling for the match. So Bobby Lashley ended up winning by referee stoppage. So Lashley ended up looking shocked as the referee ended up calling for the match. Lashley then brought in a chair. He ended up taking Goldberg's leg out, you know, hitting the chair into Goldberg's leg. Lashley uh, ended up uh, loading with chair shots now to Goldberg. Lashley was screaming at Goldberg while he was delivering the chair shots. And Goldberg's son, Gage, ended up running into the ring, which I'm like, Gage is an idiot for running into the ring. It's because he jumped on Bobby Lashley's back, and right from there, Lashley ended up putting in, ended up putting Gage in the hurt lock. What a stupid decision to run into the ring and attack Bobby Lashley just for Lashley to put you in the hurt lock. So MVP ended up getting on the mic. He ended up saying that there was no way Bobby Lashley could have known that was Goldberg's son attacking him from behind. And that it could have been anyone. So Bobby Lashley then raised the WWE Championship as MVP announced him as the champion. So Goldberg then ended up checking on his son Gage, started yelling out Bobby Lashley. Goldberg was like, oh, I'm going to kill you, champ. And that's how the segment ended. But overall, this was an awful match. And with the referee stoppage here and Bobby Lashley ended up winning, we're going to get possibly a rematch with Bobby Lashley and Goldberg. And that's going to happen at Crown Jewel in October in Saudi Arabia. Trust me, we're going to get that rematch at Crown Jewel. And then we had the main event, John Cena versus Roman Reigns. Universal Championship on the line. This was a very good match here. This, in my opinion, was the second best match of the night. And we had John Cena end up making his way out. Cena then ended up rushing to the ring as the fans ended up cheering him on. And then out came Roman Reigns, along with Paul Heyman. Of course, Reigns ended up heading to the ring. Cena sat on the top turnbuckle. Reigns ended up raising the Universal Championship in the middle of the ring. And the match ended up starting. Cena ended up throwing a few jabs at Reigns. He ended up smiling at him. They ended up locking up. And Cena ended up uh, taunting Reigns. Cena ended up applying a headlock to Reigns. Reigns ended up dropping Cena with a shoulder. And he ended up getting right back up. Of course, Reigns was talking some trash. And both Cena and Reigns ended up locking back up. Cena ended up taking Reigns down for a two count. And Cena ended up warning Reigns with the one, two, three uh, taunt that he did. So both of them go for the test of strength. Cena ended up taking Reigns down with another roll up for a two count. Reigns was working on Cena, you know, dropping him with a right. So Reigns ended up uh, playing to the crowd. He ended up dropping Cena with another right hand. So he was keeping Cena down. So Reigns was wasting time yelling at the crowd while Cena was recovering. Reigns then ended up whipping Cena hard into the turnbuckles. And Cena ended up going back down. Reigns ended up taunting Cena about going to Hollywood. Reigns delivered a suplex to Cena. Reigns ended up grounding Cena, but Cena ended up fighting to his feet. Reigns ended up putting him back down. And he ended up standing tall. Reigns delivered a suplex for a two count. And Reigns ended up tossing Cena through the ropes out to the floor. 
Reigns then end up falling to the floor, and Cena end up blocking the right hand, started fighting back. Cena then end up whipping Reigns shoulder first into the ring steps. Reigns end up standing on the steps, and he raised his fist in the air. He ended up keeping Cena down at ringside, grabbed the Universal Championship, raised it in the air. He was taunting the fans. So Cena ended up rolling back into the ring to break the count. Reigns came back in. Cena ended up rolling him up for a two count. Reigns then ended up blocking the attitude adjustment. He ended up dropping Cena with a DDT. Reigns ended up looking to the camera. He apologized to the Hollywood executives for beating Cena's ass. Which I think, which I thought that was funny how Roman just apologizes to uh, Hollywood executives. So Cena ended up getting up. He was looking to mount some offense, but Reigns ended up shutting him right back down. He was keeping the trash talk, you know, just going. So Cena ended up standing tall over Reigns, and he called for the five knuckle shuffle. Reigns ended up rocking him down. He ended up bringing him into the guillotine. Cena ended up breaking out of the guillotine. He ended up jackknifing Reigns for a two count. Reigns came right back up and delivered a Superman punch to, of course, take out Cena's momentum. Cena then ended up dropping Reigns again. And this time, he hit the five knuckle shuffle. Cena then delivered the attitude adjustment, but Reigns ended up kicking out. So Cena was frustrated. Cena then got the STF applied. But Reigns ended up dragging uh, to the bottom rope. So he broke the, the STF, Reigns. So Reigns ended up rolling out to the floor. He was limping around to regroup. Cena ended up following Reigns, but Reigns ended up nailing him with the drive-by. Reigns then ended up running around the ring. Cena ended up catching him, and he put him through the announce table with the, with the attitude adjustment. So Paul Heyman was shocked. As the fans end up popping, Cena ended up grabbing Reigns, rolling him back to the ring, went for the cover. Reigns ended up kicking out, which Cena couldn't believe it. So Cena ended up going to the top to deliver a leg drop. Reigns ended up catching him in midair, slamming him for a two count. Cena ended up blocking the Superman punch as both him and Roman went back and forth. Reigns ended up dropping Cena with another Superman punch, but Cena ended up kicking out a two, and Reigns was frustrated. Cena ended up sidestepping the spear, and Reigns ended up running into the ring post. He went down on the apron. Cena ended up bringing Reigns up to the top turnbuckle. Cena ended up climbing up, and he delivered a super AA from the second rope. So Reigns ended up kicking out of that. So Cena was shocked. And the crowd was also shocked too. So at the end of the match, we had uh, Roman end up delivering Superman punch. He delivered another one to drop Cena. Reigns then yelled out about how this is all him and that this is his company. So Reigns then waited in the corner. Cena started to slowly recover. And Reigns then delivered the spear. To Cena, and he went for the cover, and there you go. Roman Reigns end up winning the match, retaining the Universal Championship, which I even knew. I knew Roman was going to retain. So post match, we had Roman standing tall. He was celebrating, and then we had the return of Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar end up coming out. Paul Heyman was looking very worried. He was shocked. And Paul Heyman, and Paul Heyman was like, like he, like he had that shocked look on his face. So Brock Lesnar marched his way to the ring. He kept smiling while he was staring Reigns down. Lesnar then ended up entering the ring. He was staring Roman down. Lesnar got closer to uh, Roman, nodding at him and Paul Heyman. So... Lesnar looked like he was saying some words to Reigns, but we couldn't hear uh, what Lesnar was saying. Reigns then backed away. He ended up exiting the ring, staring Lesnar down. So Paul Heyman ended up backing away with Roman. His mouth was still hanging open like the... 
So Reigns ended up raising the Universal Championship in the air. He was like, not tonight. So Brock Lesnar's music started back up. And Paul Heyman and uh, Roman Reigns end up heading to the back. And that was how SummerSlam ended last night. With Brock Lesnar being back, Roman Reigns is going to be uh, facing Brock Lesnar. I guess Roman Reigns' next opponent is Brock Lesnar. So hopefully this is going to lead to a match and Roman retains the title. I want to see Brock Lesnar with the Universal Championship where he wins the title and he goes away for a couple of months and then comes back and defends the title at a pay-per-view. I don't want to see that. I want to see Roman still have the title around him. So, but overall, SummerSlam last night, fucking terrible show. Outside of Seth Rollins versus Edge and uh, Roman Reigns versus John Cena and uh, Sheamus versus Damian Priest for the United States Championship. Out of those matches, everything else, fucking awful. So anyways, that's it for my review of SummerSlam. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all later.